Hi, I'm Lauren of Spiral Elixir. I've been researching the pros and cons of vegan leather alternatives, and I've put together a video to show you what I've learned. Due to recent technological advances, faux leather has become more and more eco-friendly. And because of these advances in the industry, I've become more and more interested. While I have opinions about the use of real animal leather, I also see the value in exploring and expanding our knowledge about vegan, non-toxic alternatives. Most of all, I see the potential in certain companies that are working to make materials that are better for the environment. The term vegan refers to anything or person which does not use animal products. But rather than call it plastic leather, some marketing experts refer to faux leather as vegan to attract those people looking for something healthier or more ethical. As a result, people are unintentionally supporting the very thing they wish to avoid. Vegan leather may be vegan, but not necessarily made ethically. Most vegan leather options are made from polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, polyurethane, and textile micropolymer composite microfibers. In general, animal byproducts are natural. Leather is durable, breathable, valuable, and it can be sustainable. But when you take a natural byproduct and start to do things to it that are not natural, things start to change. Some treatments of leather contain toxic, harsh chemicals and dyes. And animals do not deserve to suffer. I am not a vegan. I am an eco-conscious vegetarian and I love animals. More and more people are realizing that we can survive alongside animals without killing them. I personally would never want to purchase leather from a company or person that was treating animals or the environment poorly. I use scraps of deer skin from people who would normally discard them because I don't want to see it go to waste and I see the value in the natural material. When I use deer skin or elk skin, or any natural byproduct from an animal. I always meditate on the life of the animal and give thanks. I would never want to waste its energy. Some of the profit from an animal raised for meat or dairy is from their skin, but incarcerating mass amounts of animals to slaughter them for their meat or skin is not something I would want to support. It is not good for the whole of our planet to continue killing animals at this rate. There are a lot of pollutants used to raise, kill, and process animals for their meat. We need to find alternatives for leather and meat, so the meat and dairy and leather industries are forced to slow down. Real leather is a natural material that should not be wasted. Furthermore, it is illegal to use carcinogenic chemicals to tan hides. It seems like non-toxic vegan leather has the potential to save animals, reduce the amount of toxins in the environment, and provide a material that's sustainable and able to be used in a wide range of ways. Livestock uses an astonishing 30% of the Earth's entire land surface, and cattle rearing generates more global warming greenhouse gases, as measured in carbon dioxide equivalent, than all transportation methods. What is vegan leather made from? Plastic, paper, cork, recycled rubber, slate stone, tree bark, apples, strawberries, mushrooms, yeast, agave, waxed cotton, recycled inner tubes, kelp, and even soy. More about mushroom leather. Muskin is another type of material made from fungus. It's made from Philinus elipisoideus, a parasitic fungus that grows in the wild and attacks trees in subtropical forests. It's 100% non-toxic and PETA approved as 100% vegan. There are ways to potentially strengthen it by using heat and compression. Tensile, or lyocell, 
is a form of rayon made from cellulose fibers from dissolving wood pulp. It is vegan and contains minimal amounts of anything toxic. You can take tinsel or fabric, canvas, or paper to line the muskin to add strength, but it's not like leather though. When I was working with the muskin, I had the intention of making the entire product non-toxic and 100% vegan. But as I was going along trying to make it work into something that could actually be used, I kept running into issues. I knew that I wanted to strengthen it by backing it with lining of some sort, and I chose fabric. But initially I was trying to work with organic muslin and it did not look very good and I realized that if I was going to use a dyed fabric that I had at my house that it wasn't going to be 100% non-toxic since I don't even know exactly what type of dyes are in some of the fabric I use because I use a lot of vintage fabric from Mexico and I was getting frustrated trying to figure out how to make it have a closure because most of the things I use are like shells or some type of um, waxed sinew string that has obviously bee byproduct and it was just becoming more and more difficult to find something that would actually make the muskin product something that someone could actually use. I first tried using hemp instead of the natural wax sinew because I thought it would be a great vegan way to sew it but the hemp did not work at all so I went out into the garden and I had this epiphany while I was watering my plants that yeah, the muskin is a mushroom and it's vegan and it's non-toxic. However, I also feel that if I'm gonna be making things that I give to people to use, I want them to be long lasting and I want them to be durable. And I realized that it doesn't need to be vegan. It just doesn't. Mushrooms, animals, Plants, humans, we all live in the same world and we all coexist and play a role in each other's lives. I decided that to be eco-friendly, I was going to use what I had at my home. So I decided to stop worrying about making it vegan and 100% non-toxic. And I just decided to make the muskin into something that would actually work because if I didn't use the materials that I had and that I knew would work it would basically be a waste of the mushroom material and I didn't want that to happen. So this is what I made. It's a little pouch and like I said it's very soft on the outside. It looks a lot like suede on the outside but as you can see I used a little bit of wax sinew. You can see the two little seals. That's what I normally use when I work with deer skin because it's really strong and it's easy to use when you're trying to sew things that are bendable and that stretch a little bit. Um, I ended up making a little strap out of uh, repurposed denim with velcro because there's no way to make this thing shut. I even tried putting it under a really heavy dresser for hours and it just pops right back up. So this isn't very practical for someone who wants to keep something inside of this pocket that they don't want to fall out because it will literally just fall right out. Um, if I were to try to sew 
anything onto this area to make it clasp onto here. It's not strong enough. After a few times of it opening, trust me, this would rip. This is the type of material that if someone were to use, they have to hold very sacred and take really good care of it. Like you could put a crystal in it and you could wrap it in the little Velcro strap that I made. And you can keep it where you want it to be safe. And you can let this be a little safe padded pouch for something really important. But as far as using this on a day-to-day -day basis as an alternative to leather, it doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense that this should be marketed as an alternative to leather. Mushrooms grow from decay and turn waste into something valuable. Mycelium is the vegetative part of a fungus. Mycelia cells are the root-like fibers that form networks that help the fungus absorb its nutrients to grow. Specialized tissues bloom out of mycelium colonies. Scientists have been studying the ways to manipulate mycelia to transform under certain conditions like the various types of nutrients they give it, temperature, humidity, lighting, and even gases it's exposed to. Mycoworks has been developing a mushroom material that can grow to the size of a full cowhide within two weeks. Another great thing about mushroom leather is that it is breathable like real leather. It's also naturally antibiotic. While both types of mushroom leathers I've mentioned are good in their own ways, Mycoworks has actually made something comparable to leather. So don't be confused. I have gone back and forth about vegan and non-vegan. I hope that you can see the good in both because as I've stated, sometimes vegan non-toxic materials are the best choice for the environment, but sometimes just considering those two labels or ways of making a material is not always the most efficient or sustainable. So I hope that by showing you the different ways that animal byproducts can be sustainable or by showing you that it's not always practical to try to make something vegan if you have other materials available, that there are different ways that you can be eco-friendly and conscious of the environment and use what you have and take materials and honor them and give thanks for them no matter where they come from. Um, if they are natural, that's always better. But like I said, we don't want to take natural resources from the earth, whether they're alive or not, unless we need to. So that's why I advocate and promote looking for and expanding our knowledge about alternatives in the hopes that in the future, we all can continue to make choices that are better for the whole planet, for all people, for all animals, for all life, and that we enjoy and make use of the things that we make and that they last a long time, no matter how we make them. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to my channel for more videos, and check out spiralelixir.com to see other things that I offer, like my book, my free articles, and lots of different seasonal products and projects that I'm working on. Much love.